He had two babies. He had two babies, twins, Asel and Asar, a boy and a girl. Muhammad Abu al Kamsan had two babies and a loving wife. Now he has nobody. An Israeli airstrike killed both his babies and their mother and their grandmother while he was out collecting their birth certificates. They had just been born. There is a video of him screaming, screaming the way any of us would scream. The screams of a man who suddenly lost everything a man could possibly lose. Screaming Gaza's screams. Sometimes it feels weird that we're not all screaming like that man all the time, as long as we share a planet with this nightmare. Sometimes I want to. After Aaron Bushnell self-immolated in protest of this genocide, I remember reading someone say something like, I understand the man who set himself on fire better than I understand the people in my own community going around like nothing's happening. Alkumsan's screaming reminds me of those words today. It often feels like an obnoxious sacrilege that our civilization hasn't stopped dead in its tracks while this happens day after day, month after month, with the full-throated support of our own Western governments. How we're still going to movies and dinners and laughing and joking while those blood-curdling screams are erupting from Gaza. It feels like waltzing outside the extermination camp and trying to ignore the smell of the black smoke coming from the chimneys. We look like lunatics. We are acting as crazy as someone whistling and dancing in the middle of a roaring house fire. Surely it would be a hell of a lot saner to be screaming all the time than to be going around our merry little way like this horror isn't happening. But that would be socially inappropriate. It would make people uncomfortable. Here, in this dystopian civilization, it's considered rude to even bring it up. Here in Australia, the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra has cancelled the performance of acclaimed pianist Jason Gilham after he dedicated a piece to the historically unprecedented number of journalists who have been killed in Gaza since October. The MSO called this dedication an intrusion of personal political views on what could have been a morning focused on a program of works for solo piano, adding that the MSO understands that his remarks have caused offense and distress and offers a sincere apology. Offense and distress. At a dedication to murdered journalists. At a concert hall. Forget about Muhammad Abu al Kamsan's offense and distress. After all, he only lost his babies, his wife, and his mother in law to an Israeli airstrike. He wasn't made to feel emotionally uncomfortable by someone talking about the bad things Israel is doing at a fancy classical music venue. Forget about al Kamsan, and forget about the two million people like him who've been screaming the same screams and living the same nightmare. What matters is our emotional comfort and our ability to psychologically compartmentalize our mainstream political beliefs away from the realities of their consequences. Nobody should set themselves on fire. But I can understand why one did. Here in this fake, fraudulent civilization, we ignore the screaming. We ignore the screaming and we go to concert halls in our best dress and our finest jewelry and demand an apology if anyone around us should make us feel uncomfortable with our support for a murderous apartheid state that is currently conducting a genocide. We ignore the screaming while slowly dying inside, cut off from truth and authenticity and a sincere connection with our fellow human beings. We ignore the screaming while yearning for sincerity, like a Palestinian trapped under a flattened building yearns for open air and a bottle of water. We ignore the screaming outside of ourselves, and we ignore the screaming within us. Muhammad Abu al-Kamsan, I am here with you tonight. 
Aaron Bushnell, I am here with you tonight. I scream until my voice is gone. Tonight, I have nothing more to offer than this. <laughs>